we have seen AI everywhere in the news. So it's a blooming topic and uh, obviously um, I thought it would be a cool um, presentation for today's audience as well. So I am coming from Microsoft. Some of these are um, insights that we have collected. Uh, some of the <laughs> insights I'm not able to share, but um, let's see. Um, I'm here um, for any questions and discussions. We can always um, have a discussion afterwards. So the agenda, um, I would like to um, discuss first why we are introducing AI in cybersecurity, why at this time, uh, what, what are the risks and challenges that uh, such an emerging technology is bringing to us. And it's important that we acknowledge these risks and that we don't turn uh, around um, so that we can actually do all we can to mitigate such risks and challenges. Obviously, uh, the, the biggest and more um, most interesting part is the opportunities that AI is bringing in the world of cybersecurity. And in the end, we are going to be talking about where um, AI is moving and what's the future of um, AI and cybersecurity. So let's start. Um, again, some statistics. Um, we always like to see some numbers. So um, it is important for us to understand that um, today organizations are simply outmatched um, um, out of the attackers. And there's a lot of reasons why this is happening. But one of them, obviously, is the increased number of um, attacks. So ransomwares, every 10 seconds, there's one ransomware happening. Um, when we look at the number, um, we, we would say, yeah, it's maybe not the case. But actually, the, the, the number of attacks are increasing every day. Mm. Uh, moving on, um, on average, we have seen two days are needed to completely overtake the companies or um, targets uh, networks. And if we add to that the global shortage, we already saw the statistic, it's 3.5 million. So it's not a huge surprise that actually the defenders are outmatched and that we need to protect um, ourselves. So I mentioned the, the challenges. So we have two kinds of challenges. One of them obviously addresses the technology. So we have complex tools. We have too many tools that don't talk to each other. Talk, talk, talk to each other. Um, when we talk about infrastructures and configurations, they are shifting, drifting, and obviously attackers use that to have more and more sophisticated attacks. On the other side, uh, we have the people and processes, always interesting. Um, we have disconnected processes. The, the talent for cybersecurity is difficult to recruit, also retain, um, and the collaboration is decided to be for. So that's why uh, we have these challenges and we need to do something about it. And that's where AI is coming into the, the play. So basically, how can we tip, um, tip it for the defenders? How can we help them um, augment their unique um, skill sets? And that's where we have AI said. So AI, it's, 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 it's going to be a complete paradigm shift. So basically, it's going to be um, a tool and a force that will help us to, to um, sustain these attacks. So here, one of the main use cases that we've seen so far is proactive defense mechanisms that AI is bringing into the game. Then um, when it comes to incident response, we are able to contain incidents quite quickly. And on top of that, uh, we are able to increase the productivity of our SOC personas because we are also introducing these natural uh, language capabilities. So it's not always uh, amazing. There are a lot of risks and challenges. And um, I would like to outline some of them. Um, the AI developers are not uh, aware what kind of challenges and risks we are having. So the list is extensive. We just started working with AI. So some, some of these are known at the moment. But again, the, the list is going to be um, bigger and bigger. So these are some of the main risks that we are currently ch uh, facing. As, as said, it's difficult. It's important for us to acknowledge them and um, to not turn our heads away because we are um, kind of uh, afraid of them. So we really need to acknowledge them and start uh, working on some mitigation measures. So obviously, if we start looking at um, data um, privacy concerns, we have seen a lot of uh, information that AI models are using a lot of um, data, uh, private data, personal data. So what, what happens with this data? We can um, think about it as if um, if the data gets in the wrong hands, then we have data leakage, um, then we have fraud, and so on and so on. 
Obviously, the second thing is threat actor evaluation. So attackers, um, they, they realize that using AI, ChatGPT, and other tools, um, they can um, advance their skills. So basically, they are using it for AI um, malware creation, and so on and so on. Moving on, um, AI models, they are great. They generate a lot of data. So why, why won't the attackers attack the AI model as well? So that's, that's all about the AI behavioral vulnerabilities. So basically what we are um, dealing with there is injection commands. So basically the attackers trying everything using the AI model to gain, for example, to the internal networks. Um, bias and discrimination, it's, it's quite a big topic. So you can uh, think about it as if the model um, are actually, is actually um, creating some bias, so basically um, uh, creating um, some decisions which are not um, in line of um, lawful uh, actions, so basically any racism, age discrimination, and so on. Insecure code generation, sorry, I just need to take a bit of water, I'm talking quite a lot. Thank you. If you're talking about um, insecure code generation, we have seen a lot of tools that can generate code snippets, but what happens with the code? Is it tested properly? Where is it deployed and so on? Companies, they find this great. So they're integrating it um, within their companies. So a lot of AI plugins are already there, but that, that brings a huge risk to companies. Copyright and ownership, a lot of AI plugins, again, creating great pictures, okay, uh, generate a great picture based on my requirements, and we have a cool picture, but what, what about the content the, and the pictures that have been used to create these models? So we need to take care into that. Um, and last but not, not least, trust and reputation. So basically, um, what, what if we have a model that we have created, and in the end, it, it, it's biased or discriminatory. So the companies have huge issues there. So <laughs> a lot of risks and a lot of challenges. Um, but the, as said, uh, it is important that we actually tackle these risks and challenges and that we try to do everything that we can to overcome them. So obviously, um, AI risks, it's a new topic. We need to create a complete new AI risk framework. So basically, identify all the risks and see what's, what's the impact to our organization. Once we know what risks we are dealing with, um, we should start looking into policies and governance, obviously. So either redefining um, existing policies or creating new policies that will actually um, um, that will tackle these identified risks. Moving on. So I mentioned a lot of plugins. Everyone's keen on using them, testing them out, and companies obviously integrating them already. So it is important that we um, actually select proper AI plugins from, from proper uh, providers. So there, there can be different selection cr criteria, but it is important to have your own defined criteria, so what is important for your organization. So data retention requirements, opting out from um, training the model, and so on. Ethical AI, as mentioned, bias discrimination. So we need really to create um, a framework that will, um, that will guide us on how we can create ethical AI models. So basically, it's not just um, avoiding um, bias, but also being um, transparent about what the AI model does, but then also um, about um, being transparent, but then also about being um, accountable for our actions. And last but not least, training. Um, it comes at the end, so we need to build uh, awareness. Um, we need to train our people and we need to upskill them on AI, definitely. Great. So not everyone and not everything is so bad. There are benefits and opportunities, um, and the benefits and opportunities are much bigger than the risks, in my opinion. So let's let's have a look on what is coming with AI in cybersecurity. So biggest use case is proactive security posture management. So this is really where the AI has the visibility across all your network or across all environment, different environments if you have them. So on-prem, um, hybrid, in the cloud, across the different um, servers, infrastructures, containers, databases, and so on and so on. So basically, imagine having this machine 
in the background that tells you, okay, this, this, um, this asset um, is not properly secured, we have a non-compliant asset, or we need to patch it immediately, and the AI does it. Quite cool feature, in my opinion, but one that, um, that we have seen actually brings a lot of value to, to customers is actually accelerated threat detection. So basically, AI, it's a it's, um, big uh, machine, uh, it has a lot of data, analyzes a lot of data, and it can go through a lot of uh, a vast amount of data in quite uh, at, at, at machine speed that we like to call it. So after analyzing all of this data, it can create kind of a pattern recognition. So it in, it knows what's normal, what's um, what's an anomaly, but also these subtle changes that a human might have missed, the the AI is able to catch. As a result, we we know. A kind of the biggest uh, KPI in security teams. It's the mean time of detection. This one is reduced heavily, and we have uh, proactive responses and risk mitigations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Um, we have seen AI used um, for incident response quite a lot. So imagine um, just using one prompt to, to tell the model, look, tell me what, what incidents uh, I'm currently having, what's the scope, what machines are in scope, and um, what are the mitigation measures that I can take off. So for a human person or human SOC analyst to go through all these steps, it, it would take um, some time. But as you can imagine, after, um, after using this prompt, you can get the information in maybe a minute, not even a minute, seconds. So a reduction of a lot of um, manual work, of course. Um, what, uh, what we have seen um, is the natural language processing. So basically, you don't have to waste time learning the vendor-specific language queries. You can just use natural language and get all the information in hand. This is one of the big concerns, but also big opportunity for us as a society. So everyone says AI is going to replace us. This, this is not, not going to happen. So basically, AI, um, we need to let it be good at what it's uh, good at, which is analyzing a lot of data. Um, and we need to let people do what they're good at, which, which is creating conclusions, taking strategic decisions, what the machine cannot do. So current challenges, as we see, a lot of alerts. Uh, I, I spoke to a lot of SOC teams. Um, yeah, analysts, they, they have a lot of alerts. They, they really find it difficult to prioritize what's important, what's not important, where an incident is happening, and so on. A lot of manual tasks, and as a result, lack of job satisf um, satisfaction. How can we help <laughs> with AI? So there are different ways AI can jump in and help. So basically here, I, I just listed um, a few of them. Threat hunting assistance, so imagine just having a tool that helps you um, do the further analysis when an incident is happening. So again, it's not a replacement, it's just enhancing the unique skills that we have. And given the fact that we have the shortage in talents, this is a great tool for us. Cool, um, one of the boring things that I don't think a lot of people like doing after they finish uh, great work is Okay, I need to write a long report and describe all the steps, all the risks, and so on. Um, one of the key, um, key things that our customers um, like using AI is actually reducing the time needed for creating different reports. So imagine having, with one click, uh, generated a report that summarizes an incident. Um, the impact that you had on the organization, you can customize the report, and with one click, you, you get it out. So I think that's, that's also quite interesting, um, but sometimes people just don't think about it, and I think it's quite important. Cool, I think I'm already um, over time, so um, I just want to quickly um, um, talk about the moving forward, uh, moving forward and the future of AI. So um, it is here, it's a big transition. Um, the transition, um, is transformative. We are already on the train, I would say, so it is important um, that we step in 
um, attackers use um, the, the AI heavily. So they use it in sophisticated uh, phishing email uh, campaigns. They use it for generating um, AI malware. And um, it, is, it is important that we step in and um, we try to shape it in a way that will serve for, for a good future in the end. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nevena. It was really interesting. Um, you just talked about the future of AI now, and I would also like to ask you, what are the, 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 the newest trends about using AI technology um, for cyber attacks? So what, what was going on the last month? So definitely, um, we've seen it on the news, um, sophisticated email attacks, the number of reported cases is growing and growing given um, or adding on top of uh, deep fake and um, other um, techniques, um, it's uh, the, the number of um, increased uh, phishing um, attacks is, is just uh, crazy. But what I would like to, to mention here uh, is that now we can see a number of different websites so where you can just go and uh, tell them what the target is. So the website in the in the background would go and do the whole attack chain. So starting from reconnaissance to vulnerability scanning to trying to find ways to exploit the target to exploiting the target and then doing the cleanup processes. So the, the numbers of uh, the numbers of um, attacks definitely will increase, and it's increasing already now. And that's why we need to step up in the game. Mm -hmm. And then you say we need AI, and AI actually helps us. So if people are really critical, for example, what, how do you convince them, or, or what do you say that they really see the benefits? So what I would like to say is there are risks, there are challenges, of course. Uh, we need to work on them, we need to acknowledge them, we need to mitigate them, we need to have controls. Current controls, today's controls, will not mitigate the risks that are coming. Um, so we need to, to be more innovative and we need to tackle them more and more. But on the contrary, as said, AI is already there. Um, attackers are using it um, since some time now. So if we just ignore AI and um, just pretend it's not going to help us anymore, then they're going to continue using it, but we are going to be stuck at the same situation and we're just going to see an increase of, of attacks. So just, just um, yeah, maybe a final thought is um, it's here, the, the transition is happening. Um, we need to step up and we need to, to get it in our hands so that we can shape it and that it serves us for, for the better in the future. It's very nice, but I guess you always also have questions, and uh, who wants to ask Nevena a question? Do we still need a warm up? Maybe <laughs> no one. <laughs> Is there a question for Nevena? No, maybe. Yeah, there's one question. Yeah, Patricia. Uh, work for Proton, and we obviously are a, secure, a software as a service uh, provider and open source. And so I wonder if the, I mean, the whole training of AI is right, needs data. And so I wonder if it's gonna be somehow pulling more open source stuff than closed source. And if that has any implication or if, or, or if, or if not, in your opinion. Uh, the AI models using open source or being open source? Yeah, I mean, so just there's more, I guess, available because by definition it's open. And I just wonder if that you think that that has any kind of implication in how the models are trained or what the results are. Yeah, definitely. If you are talking about open source, it's it's there, um, visible to us, visible to attackers that are um, definitely going to play around with it and try to to find their way and uh, to exploit the the models, as said. Um, but it's important that. Um, that when we are selecting an AI provider that we select based on, on our criteria. So I don't know if it's for us important. I don't know if we are analyzing a, a large amount of customer data. Of course, we want to, to keep the AI offline in an offline mode. We do not want to send the, the, the data online. So there are different criteria. There's different criteria. And it depends on what kind of services the company is providing. But obviously, I think it, there needs to be kind of a 
assessment uh, or questionnaire that needs to be followed when we are selecting the AI provider. Thank you. Someone else? No. So then I would also, again, like to thank you, thank you. very much for your very interesting presentation.